Good good evening, good evening, good evening. (laughs) Hey, everybody, how y'all doing? I just want y'all to continue to pray for my mom. Uh, She's battling with some stuff right now. But hey, we're going to push on through. Hey, welcome, everybody, man. Welcome to tonight's uh, show. I know it's football season, um, and and I know some things may not be favorable to all, but uh, we in this thing. So give me a second, give me a second, uh, do what I do, share this. I'm sharing this. Make sure people can uh, comment as well. Uh, just want to thank everybody for continued support. You know, we've been doing this thing for a while, and and uh, I don't take it lightly, and I just get excited every week after week after week. So I'm going through my thing, sharing it like I used to do. Make sure you share this with some people. Uh, let them know that we're in the building, in the building. Oh, can you mute that because it's going to be going mm-hmm. off. Sorry. Cause no, hey, sorry. I just know. I just, I please believe. I understand. I get it too as well. But all right, let people know that you're in the building. Let me know what's going on. Let me know where you're tuning in from. And I promise you, you guys won't be disappointed tonight. Uh, a few more things I want to do. Want to share this just one more time, and then we're gonna get right on with it. Get right on with it. Um, I'm, I'm excited uh, about tonight's show. I got my beautiful mama on here with me. Um, no, no, no. <laughs> she right here. She right here. Got my beautiful mom here with me. And uh, uh, again, it's such a joy to uh, have her here with me uh, up here in in northern country. Uh, for those that want to know, the weather hadn't really started changing yet f- for the worst. Uh, mm-hmm. We kind of enjoying what's going on down there in uh, back home in Alabama. It's been, been about, running about the same. Yeah, about the same. Days. Past couple of days have been about uh about 55 degrees in the 50, but please don't get it twisted. <laughs> it's gonna happen very soon, and I'm gonna be out there shoveling and getting me a, a, a snow blower and doing what we got to do. But hey, and all in all, man, um, uh, hey, I thought I did do that. Yes, yes. Now, thank everybody for tuning in. Thank everybody for tuning in. Let me see who we got. We got Miss Jaredine. Hey, Miss Jaredine, thank you for your continued support, Adam. What's going on, brother? Haven't forgotten about you, man. Very proud of you. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Uh, Ms. Jaredine says she miss you, brother. I miss her, too. Yes, she knows yeah. I do. Yes, and she talk about you all the time, too. So, uh, um, yep. Hey, my mom said, hello, my sister. <laughs> and give a shout out to my niece. What's up, Justice? What's going on? My hello, beautiful Justice. niece. My beautiful niece. All the way up there in Atlanta, Tennessee. So, uh, just want to go ahead on it. You know, we usually do our thing when we talk about um, uh, entrepreneurs and things like that. Uh, uh, before we do that, we got Chandrilla. Say, so, hey, Mama D and Roberto. She's been calling mm-hmm. me Roberto since <laughs> since elementary school. Hello, Chandrilla. Uh, but, hey, I want to give a shout out again. This will be the last week. I'm going to push it. No, I'm going to do it for a month, Mama. I might as well do it hey, for a month. You. Might as well do it for, for a month. So, uh, hey, look. Again, if you haven't gotten it, go get it. Go get it. Go get the album, the conversation. I put the links out there. Go, you can stream it. You can go on uh, YouTube. Uh, you can go get it from iTunes, all digital streaming platforms, Amazon Music, all of that. So go check it out, man. Uh, check it out. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. I've been getting some real good feedback, and I'm already uh, excited and getting energized about doing the next project. And I would tell you, it's just going to be good. Just go on from here and there. Now. Got some more. Just to say, hey, Uncle and, and Nana. So we got that out of the way, right? So now it's it's time to jump into tonight because I'm telling you, tonight's topic and tonight's discussion is going to be a real, real, real good one. Why? Because I've been wanting to talk about this one pretty much. It's been in my mind since I started doing this show over a year ago. Uh, Mama, they go, uh, Vet, Vet say, hey, what's going on, Vet? Hey, Hello. Vet. How you doing? I will tell you, th- tonight show is going to be truly a blessing to so many because it's going to be helpful to so many. Uh, what's going on, Angela? How you doing? Hey, how you doing? Hey, I see your Razorbacks. They doing their thing. So I know you happy. But uh, not, I, I ain't even going to say that. I ain't even going to say Go that. ahead. Go ahead. Go well, ahead. I mean, Go Arkansas ahead. playing good right now against Texas A&M. Mm-hmm. But it's another team in Alabama that's not doing not doing so good right now. So I, I, I'm going to just let that go. We got Coach Jenkins. Uh, Coach Jenkins in the building. What's going hey, on? Hey, Coach. And we got my he had, aunt. He had a show <laughs> yesterday talking about Ruth. It was Ruth? a great show. Okay. We got uncle, my Uncle Charles, Charles Marshall. 
<laughs> he said, hello, Swift, and Nash, you drive on, Black Knights. You're talking about Army. <laughs> so, hey, we got it going. And But, hey, listen, we're about to jump right into this. Tonight's show, I've been wanting to talk about this for a while because I really feel my mama shared something with me. Um, it was over 10 years ago now. And, and it, it was something powerful at the time. You know, you just have conversations. But my mama said something to me that really... Um, and she don't even know this because I never really told her, but when you speaking and you're talking and, and you share some things, I really didn't know. Um, uh, we got Tammy. What's going on, Tammy? How you doing? It's Tammy Williams from Greensboro. Mm -hmm. with Tara. Uh, um, hey, I'm telling you, tonight's show is going to be a blessing. I'm not just saying that. I, it's going to really free a lot of people up because a lot of things we beat ourselves up about. And we become our biggest barriers into a lot of things uh, that we become our biggest barriers to enjoying the fullness of the abundance in which uh, God bless us with. Has, has, and has God has already has for us. And we are the ones that end up being the ones blocking our own blessing. And it's really because of our mindset and our mentality. And a lot of this stuff comes from us not healing and dealing with things like I've been talking about over the show, on my show, really, for pretty much the inception and the genesis of it. Um, it is a lot of things we deal with. A lot of things happen to us that we have no control over. But we do have control over how we process it and how we choose to heal from it. And a, a lot of those times that those things happen because the enemy, when we talk about the enemy, I'm speaking about the devil and the concept of the devil. It doesn't matter what you believe, but this is what I'm speaking on. I'm speaking on the enemy does certain things through thoughts and have certain people do certain things that will hurt you because he wants to hinder you from walking in the fullness in which God has for you. So when we find ourselves in a revolving door dealing with the same stuff over and over again, but we don't find ourselves really realizing that, like I said, dealing with the realization that you have been blocking your own blessings. We have to come to the realization. We got to deal with that. We got to process that, that you have been the one blocking your own blessings. And we can talk about this from all the time. And a lot of times it is so easy to be the victim. We are natu uh, naturally conditioned to be the victim. We, I'm gonna say that again. <laughs> we are naturally conditioned to be the victim. Now, what you saying, Chef? What you mean by that? What, what you saying about we naturally, uh, uh, <laughs> and especially when it comes to the blessing that you've been blessed with. And I'm gonna say this real quick because this just dropped in my spirit. God created Adam. He created, he created the, uh, and we're talking about in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, right? And God created Adam. And my mom gonna jump in on this one in a minute. I know we get a lot of comments, I'm gonna get to you. But God created Adam, right? And he charged Adam to work the field, to work the field, the garden, right? And God had the condition set to work the garden. But God also realized that he made a mate for all, everybody else. And he said, it is good for man not to be alone. So God created Eve from Adam, the river Adam. When God created Eve, God presented Eve to Adam. And when Adam saw her, he was like, hey, what you want to name? He was like, whoa, man. Whoa, man. And God said, woman? He was like, yeah, I'll go with that woman. Now, listen, that's my interpretation. That ain't what happened. But you can laugh about it, right? But uh, with that, when he created Eve, right, and he gave them instructions on they can do anything except eat from the, the tree of knowledge, good and evil, right? And everybody know the story about how the serpent came and convinced Eve to eat and Eve convinced Adam. But when God came back, the direct order of things, God came back and called to accountability of Adam for his actions. What did Adam do? Adam played the victim. Adam said, the woman that you gave, you gave me. So this is what I'm talking about. In our sinful nature, our sinful body, it is so easy to to, to lean towards blaming somebody else for something we should have been accountable for ourselves. So that is why I said that with that, it is natural for us to want to do that. Now, when we come to deal with the realization, that's when we got to come with looking at ourselves in the mirror. 
Now, all of this is going to make sense in a minute, but I want to get to some comments before we start getting going good. Uh, we got uh, another class of 9 8 tuning in. What's going on, Raven? How you doing? You see my mama? Oh, 9 8. Uh, 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 Vet said, Woo, I know I need this lesson, then. Mm -hmm. Sheila Taylor, she's watching. Hey, Sheila, how you doing? Miss Sheila Taylor. My man, Jermaine Rocket, what's going on, my brother? Uh, and then uh, Miss Miss Jaredine says, Sister, it, it, is that why <laughs> we are waiting? Yes, that's why we're still in the waiting room. <laughs> that's why we're still in the waiting room. Okay, so mama, what I was talking about earlier, uh, <laughs> she's talking about 9-8. <laughs> Don't start with the 9-8. Don't start with that. Driller. Driller. I, I knew it had to be her. I knew it. So what I, what, I, what I was talking about earlier, mama, is you told me something, and you wrote me something, and I can remember when I was going through my divorce, 2007 and 2008, um, and 2006, 2000, listen, that was, ooh, Lord Jesus, you talking about rough, <laughs> rough, rough, R-U-F-F, -F. it was rough, and a lot of things going on, and as I look back on it, I was dealing with a lot of stuff, uh, dealing with a lot of, you know, uh, it was, the foundation, my foundation was shaken, <laughs> everything that I, that I had known to be true was challenged and rocked at its core, and I can remember processing and going through it. And I remember my mama dealing, uh, um, seeing her son hurt. And I know that's a different thing, especially at the time I was a new parent, but especially now <laughs> being a parent of an adult child, you oh know. God, you, oh, you gonna hit that in there? Uh, right listen, I got hit. You gonna hit that in there right uh, now? I got, but being a parent of an adult child, it's a different type of uh, concern. Um, and I know that you was concerned about me, but you share something with me. And you share something with me that really brought some perspective. And the thing that you shared, you said, Robert, I fought your daddy for 20 plus years of our marriage. Mm -hmm. And in the time where you, watch this, you didn't surrender who you were. You submitted to the authority and the carbon of my father. Right. And you said that you were able, you all were able to accomplish more in the nine years, um, to, well, from, yeah, from a, yeah, about that. From the nine years that you did, you was able to accomplish more than the 24? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. About 22. 22 years. The 22 years that you fought against it. Now, in my mind, that was hard for me. I'm like, what you mean you fought against that? I didn't see you up in his face. I didn't grow up with no drum. We didn't have no drama. We didn't have uh, um, we didn't grow up with no arguing back and forth. We didn't grow up with no I mean, just, I, I mean I, I didn't see none of that. So in my mind I was like, uh, what you talking about? Because mama, I saw you you always honored my daddy with like you you made sure he was okay. You catered to him and certain things. So you're not going to mention my depression right? Oh, I, well, I mean, daddy was already spoiled anyway from, from grandma and everybody else. But like my mama would cook for my dad, making sure he good, make sure he had what he wanted. Well, he liked fruit salad. She would make a fruit salad. She would do all of those things. So when my mama got to talking, I was like, what, a, what is she talking what, about? What, what, what is, this woman is crazy. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, in my mind, I'm like, what do you like? What do you mean? And then as I live, begin to live this four letter word <laughs> called life. <laughs> Uh, live it a little bit longer. Now I begin to really understand where you was coming from. When I, when I got married, I, I, I knew I was marrying. It's a whole long story, but from where you started, mm -hmm. we'll start there. Mm -hmm. um, when we when I got married, I was young. I knew I was marrying a pastor because he was pastoring at the, when we got married. So hold on, let me give some background on that. I'm just give y'all a little background for those that don't know. My daddy has been preaching ever since he was about three years old. I'm just going to say that. You ask my aunts and my uncles. They said my daddy used to walk around the house But he accepted preaching. his calling. He, he accepted 16. his calling when he was 16. And I actually met him when he was 16. Okay. And I just want to put that out there, that he was in high school preaching. Yes. He was in so high it's, preaching. And it's one the typical individual. <laughs> and that's what I'm trying to. No, <laughs> really, he was not a typical individual. Yeah, I just want As to kind a of matter of fact, he was pastoring at a church that I was serving as the uh, musician okay. at the church. And um, 
even though we already knew each other because we had known each other from working within the church mm -hmm. for several years. As I said, I met him when he was 16 at the time I was 13. Mm. Um, but we were still working, we were working in an organization called Mass Sunday School. The Mass Sunday School uh, was where you, a group of churches would come together and study the Sunday School lesson for the next Sunday. And then she put that in a very nice way. <laughs> As an adult, I'm gonna tell you as a kid, what that mean was on Sundays. Y'all went to church all day long. No, it ain't no y'all. I'm just gonna put that like that. Cause daddy didn't make Tara and Portia go with him like he made me. So I would go to church, Sunday school. Then then we'll usually go to grandma house, grandma house to eat. Right. And then daddy would like to go to these other service. That start at two o'clock, that he would take me, then would stop in to show his face at another service that started about four or five. Then we would go to Mass Sunday school. So typically on Sundays, when I said I was in church all day long, I was in church all day long. I'm sorry, Ma. I just, okay. I, I just want people to understand the two different sides how you see it. But but anyway, he he was already a pastor, mm -hmm. and I was a pastor's wife. Mm -hmm. Um I being young, and I was young, mm -hmm. not knowing exactly what to expect for being a pastor's wife, that was one thing. But I also have to go back to, and it's a lot of history we got to bring yeah, up. We, 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 let's okay. dig it up. Let's dig it up. Okay. The history, my history was that even though I was young and my husband did ask me to marry him and I accepted and we got married young, I was already a mother. I was an unwed mother. And um, I really felt that his asking me was beneath him. Mm. Okay, I did not feel worthy to be his his uh, his wife. But other than that, in addition to that, as being an unwed mother, I never thought I would get married. You know, because of my situation and my dad. Apparently, he didn't think I was going to get married either because he taught me how to carpenter. He taught me how to. Uh, nah, nah, don't wait. That. Don't hold on. <laughs> he ta he don't, taught me how. Don't, don't hold on. Wait a minute. Don't put that all on my granddad. <laughs> and he taught me how to do, look, do a whole lot of stuff around the house. But anyway. He did, but hold on. I'm going to say, I'm going to let everybody know this. That ain't all on Charles Brown because when Lil Devil, and I'm talking Lil Devil. You know, look, I'm going to tell you about Lil Devil. This just real quick. Lil Devil is the, the, the alter ego that I like to call my mom, right? So the day I get up and I cut the grass, right? Now, Lil Devil got mad at me because Lil Devil was hoping that I didn't cut the grass this week. So next week, when I go to work, she can go out and cut the grass. So that's Lil Devil. So everybody kind of see what I'm talking about. I mean, because I, I, I had within myself... Mm -hmm. I had decided based on the what was being spoken to me outside of what God has spoken to me. Oh, mm, well, so yeah. Let's, so let's dive into that. Because first of all, like mama, you said this, you said this, and that, that's, you said that you didn't feel worthy. Correct. Even though my father saw you as worthy and asked you. Correct. So because... Because I didn't, I felt he was a minister. He was know, a minister. You know, and you know, where do we put ministers? We put ministers up on a pedestal. But I got okay. this. But okay. We, and so, and that they were of God. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so I'm like, there's no way in the world that I'm supposed to be married to this man. Okay. So, so, so all of the things that I had done prior to that in order to be a self-made woman, mm -hmm. I was going to be super woman. Mm -hmm. you, know, I, you know, the song, I'm every woman. Yes, I was going to be every woman. I was going to so, so, bring home the bacon. So, I was going to... So I'm, I'm asking this moment. Mm -hmm. So in the 70s, the, the uh, woman empowerment movement. The woman empowerment movement was was heavy. Okay, it was, it heavy. was real heavy. It was re real heavy. Like, real yeah, heavy. like so, burn your bra and heavy. Yeah, so... Yeah, and, we, had, and, we had to end up going back and get them, but you know... <laughs> So, and because, and, and I want to, I want to, I really want to talk about this from from this perspective because um, it, it wasn't something that my daddy did. No, it was nothing. It was did. something internal that you felt. That I felt because of 
what what the world had, what everybody else was what saying the world had told me instead of accepting what God, God had said. had spoken to you correct and he had and he had told me that you know that for really before my before my husband even proposed to me mm -hmm. I was going through a period <laughs> I just make sure we get as good. That's okay. Get, get, get I, was going, I was going through a period of it was like all of I was being bombarded. Mm. I would I, I guess you would say with young ministers. Mm. And I'm going like, y'all leave me alone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not, I, first of all, I'm not worthy. I'm here trying to serve God now because I, I really, really, really need all the help I can get in order to be a better person. Mm -hmm. But I did not feel that I was worthy. So was that, did that have a lot to do with the timing in which my daddy approached you? Because a lot of times we feel like we ain't good enough. We feel <laughs> like we got some other stuff we need to work on. Okay. We know our internal demons. We know the things that we got Correct. issues with. Correct. Right? Correct. And in our mind, we going to figure it out ourselves and fix it before God did, did allow God well, to do what I, he did. I figured that your your dad was going to find out that he had made a mistake, and it wasn't going to be long before he made that before he found that out, mm. and then he was going to leave me, and then you know, but that was it. Until then, I was just going along, trying to do the best I could to build him mm. up as a minister, because I knew that part of of what we're supposed to do in, in kingdom building is to ensure that the word is spoken. And he was one speaking the word. So I, I was working, I was working in, in my knowledge of that. However, mm. I did not feel like I should have been there. So a lot of things I did that I have to, submission. And you, you people hear that word, they see your submission and they be like, but it's not weak. It's as you said earlier, it is submitting to the 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 order in which God has 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 set up for it. So I'm in this relationship, I'm in this marriage, and even though my vows, and that's the other thing, my vows, mm. I, in my vows, I said I would do that. Mm. But guess what? I did not do that. And who were the vows made before? God. But the, the vows were made before God. And I but I decided, you know, hey. I, I know I got to stay by myself. I know eventually he's going to leave me, so I'm going to take care of everything. And the more we, we were working, he was working, I was working, and we were accumulating, but and, and you, but not... You was accumulating, but you no, wasn't we, building. Right, correct. You was correct. accumulating, but you wasn't building. And then pretty soon that accumulation started being, started knocking out, you know, things started happening, and, you know, as you said, life hit, hit. Yeah. And when life hit, there were things that happened that, you know, I was like, I was knocked off my feet. What I finally realized, because I started looking around mm -hmm. at people who were, um, had been married about the same length of time that I was, mm -hmm. some younger, and they're building, they were building and it was it was going up. Mm. I'm going through this, and I'm going down. Mm. We had gotten to a point of my just trying to do my own thing, mm. not we do our thing. It was like, okay, you go ahead and do your thing. You go on and do that. You go ahead and preach and whatever. And I'm going to do this over here. But but but, Mama, the the the. the the thing, and I'm, I'm speaking for me, from my perspective, being the child in there, right? Mm -hmm. I always seen you supporting him in his ministry. I had to. But what I'm saying is that never wavered. No. But mentally, you wasn't submitting under the covering mm -mm. in which God had provided for you. Correct. So it was almost like God had gave you the keys to a house. Mm -hmm. And I was sleeping but, outside. But you were sleeping outside and complaining that you was getting wet. Complaining that I was getting wet. Even though he had provided me a house. I this is the thing. I don't feel like I don't want to be, I don't want to go into that door because if I go through that door, 
then I'm not going to be, I'm not going to, nobody going to know about me anymore. So as you look back on it, and I want to dissect what you said, because I, I really, really love this dialogue. Uh, and before we got some comments, uh, uh, Raven said, don't do us. Uh, <laughs> don't do us. <laughs> Chef, don't do us. Uh, Raven said, yes, Lord. Those grown kids put a different worry on me. Listen, I will tell you this, though. I will tell you. Me, personally, I have a concern, not a worry. Let me tell you why. The Bible says you bring up a child in the way that they should go. go. Right. And if I know I did everything to provide them the tools necessary for them to make their own decision, I, I ain't losing no sleep over something that they did. Uh, Miss Paige Banks says, sorry, she late. And then we I have, know, I know, I know, I know wife in law. I'm gonna, sorry. I, I know, I know wife in law. I just, I just, just let, just know that I know. Okay. And Mika said, uh, you on the show looking gorgeous. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very Man, much. And she said, uh, hey, Miss Shepard, hey, 98. So we got the 98 in there. Just want to just let you know that 98, we come strong. But uh, mama, when you when you talk about that, how much did the words of the outside impacted how you saw yourself? Okay. Because I, no, I'm saying that because from, from which from all from all from, from all everything. that the, everything that led up to that, because guess what? It ain't just what one person spoke. No, it was those small little things over time that kept going and going, going on those thoughts, because guess what? The enemy attacks you through thoughts. Oh, and, and, he, and he will tell you that you're not worthy, mm -hmm. even when you are. And even though it, you know, it's, it's strange because we we hear things. But because our mind is so full mm. of what the world has to say, and God speaks plainly, mm -hmm. and he speaks boldly, but he doesn't speak loudly. Mm. So you understand? Yes, so what we hear is we hear the loudness and of, of, the, of, of the, the world. Of the world. And he's there, you know, he's telling you, no, don't do that. You know, just, just, just simple. No, don't do that. Don't know. No. And then what we're doing is, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, that, that don't taste good. Yeah, you know, go, go so, on in there. You know, you doing the right thing. That's what we hear. Why? And one of the reasons we hear that is because we have that edging on, that ego that says that we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Even when we're not, because someone else says it. Mm -hmm. It builds our ego and our ego becomes inflated so that now it's inflated. And even though this all this God is standing back there and saying, no, don't do that. I have something else for you. So we don't want to wait for that something else. We want to go ahead and get that what, what we have right now. So basically what you said, how you were. Was you were being obedient in your actions, but rebellious with, with your heart. heart. With your mind. With yeah. your mind. You yeah. know what I'm speaking? The heart, the, right. the essence right. of, of, of self. Correct. Um, all because of your insecurities that were that were fed through over time. From to from, from create. people. And somebody I had a minister tell me this um not long ago, and he said, you know, we look at the church now, and a lot of people don't want to look at it this way. What I'm what I'm about to say is not offensive. Uh, as far as, and I'm not saying that everybody's like this, but just, just hear me out. The church mm. that we know, that we, we speak about, not, you know, not God, not Christ church, but the church that we worship in is, is full of old prostitutes and old pimps. Yeah. Prostitute okay. pimps. <laughs> okay. Uh, we, we can go we down got, the line. <laughs> Uh, robbers, burglars, you know, so, you know, whatever, murderers. So they you really, know. so you saying they full of some uh, Robert Love, Joy Shepherds? <laughs> because you know, I'm just saying, like, see, we like to paint this thing like we all good. Yeah. Oh no, no, no. But we got a lot of them, and a lot of times they will demonize what younger people do, mm -hmm. and they they're doing it, and I, I don't think they're they're doing it, and they're 
what they're doing is right, but what they're doing is wrong. So they 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 methodology what doing their is, intentions is is right. it's, it may be good, but their methodology is offensive yeah. and hurtful. They, they're trying to stop you stop younger people from making some of the same mistakes that they made. But they, but don't, they don't they don't present it. But but way. because they don't tell they, right. young folks the they, truth, they don't tell them. The That's truth. why the Bible says. Old men teach young men how to be husbands. Right. And old old women, women teach young women how to be wives. And the Bible also well, says you problem now because we don't have a whole lot but, of old women that but, know how to be wives. But so that's a whole nother discussion. <laughs> whole nother discussion. But what I'm saying is we don't want to tell the truth. We don't want to be transparent no. because we want everybody to see us as we are now. I can remember uh my oldest daughter Chandler when she was getting ready to go off to college. I had a very uh strong colorful <laughs> and transparent conversation <laughs> about the potential things that she will run into and she will see and the ideologies of things because guess what why, why we act mom and i'm saying why do we go through and act as if just because i may not do something like i used to do that don't mean i still don't know the playbook so, so, because we because we reach that point when we come into the church, mm -hmm. we're now holy. Listen, you just full you of understand? crap. You understand? <laughs> full of crap. We're now holy, and God has cleaned me from all of that. So, because God has cleaned me from all of that, I began to so, have this mental amnesia because mm -hmm. I don't want to. I don't want to bring it up because if I bring it up, guess what? No one is going to look at me as the holy so but mom and and as and, I, and, and, and 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 holy person that i have placed and deemed myself to be okay mama look we got a hater on board oh, we got uh deandra uh not her say she said she agreed to what we're saying but the hater is on board right now she <laughs> said blank twice if you're not saying that. so that's that's the hater that's the real hater of the family uh, <laughs> uh, she said, oh, okay, now we are now holy. I know people like that. Yeah, so I'm saying people, I'm just telling you right now, if you got people like that, just go so, ahead and so, laugh in their face. So Mika just going to keep saying 98, okay. No, she just said 98 <laughs> earlier. That, that's just in there. But mama, I, I really, and I really want to get back to, uh, just really want to dig a little bit deeper in some of the things that you brought up because, you know, really seeing how we are the ones blocking our blessing. Yeah, and and, and this and this is when I, when I say that, I'm going to tell you, we went, hmm. I'm going to, we went from being more than $50,000 in debt mm -hmm. the, when I, when mm -hmm. I made the decision, we were over 50, I'm just going to say we were over $50,000 in debt. This is, this is, this, I'm speaking now on material Things. Mm -hmm. We're not, I'm not going to even talk about how our relationship grew, mm -hmm. uh, but we went from over fifty thousand dollars in debt to over a hundred thousand dollars in the bank mm -hmm. with all the debts paid. Mm -hmm. Not not just. But that was done like, like that. So the 23, 20 plus. I say twenty plus, plus years mm -hmm. of. You and your mindset doing your own thing. Doing my own thing. Because I told him, you know, you yeah. do this. And, and I had divided it up. You do this and I'll do this. And you take care of this and I'll take care of that. And then it we got we went through a period of where um I didn't have it. Mm -hmm. And he had to step in. And then uh when he didn't have it and I had to step in, I felt some kind of weight. But wait a minute. <laughs> well, I, listen, oh, hold on, hey, hey, I'm, I'm just I'm just telling you, <laughs> I felt some kind of weight. And so, but uh, during this time where I decided that I was going to give mm -hmm. and, 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 and provide and allow him to, to do what he needed to do, I never will forget that my father, uh, who uh, we were caregivers for him, mm -hmm. and my husband had lost his job, and um, including his pastorage. But we never went without. Mm. And even though we were living and we we were we had we were in debt when we started. My dad it's, it was on his bed one day. He says, you know what? He said, I don't know about anybody else. He said, but I know that the God y'all serve has got to be something because you have not lost anything. Mm. 
and we had not. And it was, and I only thing I can tell those who are married and want to be married, if you have not, now I'm not saying, now this, now I will tell you this. <laughs> when I decided to do this, this is what I say. I was praying to God, God, you know, you keep telling me to do this. And I said, I'm so scared. I said, but I'm going to do it. But and this, hey, this is the world coming in now. But now the first time the lights go cut off, I'm gone. Mm. The night's lights never will cut off. Mm. Now, now you know now, the, the, never. I mean, we I mean, I'm talking about, yes, God had to show me. Yes, did I challenge God? Yes, I did. But I talked to him before. I always talked to him. I always talked to God but I didn't always listen. That is a difference. And I know people say that um, Christianity mm -hmm. um, is a, a racial. They, they, they bring a racial thing. And, it's and, a racial, what they it's do, a racial, I, it's a racial I, I, I wonder, design, what, design. What they do is this though. This is what they do, right? Mm -hmm. So they take the racial strategy of the uh, continental Europeans mm -hmm. who were coming and they was looking at it for to use as a control mechanism through through the enforcement of illiteracy mm -hmm. because that's what nobody ever talks about. They talk about all oh, Christianity is a, is a white man's religion or slave religion, but what they don't talk about is the history of it, the documented history of it, being all the way down to Ethiopia. Okay, we know. I'm, I'm, I'm not even. What I'm saying is, they like to use that. Oh yeah, they like because that's, that's easy. Saying. That's easy that's to start. Like but if you, if you, if 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 you are a, and I'm, I'm still studying the Bible, so I, I am not a Bible expert. But where, where did this take place? Where, where did Paul and and, and 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 the disciples? Where did they roam to to to, to deliver the word? Why was it that when Christ, after Christ was born, and they were looking for him to destroy him, why was he able to go to Egypt, Egypt, Egypt. and blend in? Listen, yeah, and, and, hold on, hold on. I just, and I hide just, in for what two I years? Just, uh, yeah, I yeah just, for two years. Like, so, listen, listen. So listen. I'm just like you know, and and when and you had an opportunity to go to and to Egypt is in Africa. I want you to, but you had a chance to go to uh, Iraq, Iraq, mm -hmm. and 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 literally and, pass through. The southern part of, drove through the southern part of Iraq, which is where Ur Abraham was from. Correct, right? Correct. I literally stood on the banks of the Tigris and the Euphrates River, and that was in the Book of Genesis. Okay, and you can still go to Iraq today. And if you go to the eleventh chapter of the Book of Genesis, they talk about the Tower of Babel and how all the language came. Correct, the Tower of Babel what? is still in Iraq. The base of it is still in Iraq today. Also, Babylon was in Iraq. So we can, what I'm talking about all this is when I was in Iraq, and I want to share this, when I was in Iraq, and we seen all the different skin tones, mm -hmm. I was embedded with an Iraqi infantry battalion for an entire year. Mm -hmm. That It was 10 Americans living with the Iraqi infantry battalion. They had people in that battalion that had my skin tone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in Iraq. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not talking about race thing. I'm just putting those things just like what you're saying. Right. It was in a place where people of color. I, 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 in other words, that you have people that speak things that they don't know. Mm -hmm. So the word of God is that we, that we, when we take the time to actually read it and study it, we will find that God speaks to people that listen mm -hmm. to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I remember, uh, I, I can remember a lot of things that happened uh, during my marriage and, and people made a statement last week. Some people have made the statement that they always saw me as a strong woman. I, I may, I may have presented myself as being <laughs> strong. Uh, and, so, and, and, and my son posted something to a, to the family group um, not long ago. As children, we growing up, we never knew we were watching our parents grow up. Mm -hmm. And a lot of parents, especially when they're in their 20s, some of them when they're in their 30s, you're still trying to find out about stuff yourself. And, and, to, and then you've got to raise 
different personalities. <laughs> you got to raise. <laughs> you got to raise. Different. And you have to. You have to train up. Different portionalities. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. To, you have to train up individuals mm -hmm. to where they can be. And, and they're not, you know, you're trying to train them and then you are training yourself as well. Mm -hmm. Now, I can, I can say that I am grateful, even though I did my own thing. And even though I was a, a young uh, mother, unmarried mother, mm -hmm. I had the word. Mm -hmm. I had been taught the word. But I truly did not understand the word. So, but, you, you, but, you, and, and I feel so much. But, and I want, I want you. I want, I don't want people to really hear this out, right? Because mm -hmm. all of that stuff that you talked about, from where you were before, how you, you know, how you thought about yourself and everything, right? Mm -hmm. Now, the person that my father was, the person, mm -hmm. the core. Not, I'm talking about the core of who my father was. Was it? The thing that God created him to be, was it what you needed to be able to connect to we, and heal? We, we were, I, I said this at his funeral. He was not perfect. I was not perfect, but we were perfect for each other. Mm -hmm. And had I learned that earlier, I truly believe, even though my husband was a great man of God, I think he would have been received greater so because we had we would have been working together. Listen, Pastor uh, oh, uh Pastor um Holland, mm -hmm. my pastor in uh, Augusta, mm -hmm. he talks about that all the time, right? And talks about he said that when he was in seminary school, he said that your spouse would either be an asset or a liability, mm -hmm. a hindrance mm -hmm. to your ministry. Mm -hmm. Um, how much energy, time and energy did you waste? on things that did not matter, but you were consumed with because of your mindset? Uh, I, I would say this. I was, uh, as you know, and most people that knew you all, Reverend Shepard wasn't letting y'all go nowhere. And I, 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 when I say nowhere, I'm, I'm like... <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful that I had my mama. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and there were times that I literally had to beg but then this is what I did. Even after begging him to allow you all to do certain things, I prayed, God, please don't let nothing happen. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so here I am. Had, you know, I, there, st there still would have been an opportunity for me to, to present my argument. I, mm -hmm. I, I truly believe that because of the man that um, your father was. Mm -hmm. um, but I just felt, and then those times that he did do it, guess what? Mm. Guess how I felt? You felt what? Victorious. So that I had won, but it is, but I learned that it was not about winning because had I taken the time to explain and express, I feel that we would have come. I mean, so but but what you talked about was so, and I, and I, I'm gonna use this analogy. I'm gonna use a sports analogy. Oh God. No sports analogy. So. <laughs> Don't talk about alcohol. No, no, hey, no, this is not football. <laughs> I'm going to use basketball. All right. So in the aspect of playing your position, Ooh. playing your position. In basketball, you have a point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, and a center. And you can set that up however you want to set it up. Some people go three forwards. You know, so it depends, on the, depends on the makeup of their team, what mm -hmm. works for them. Correct. Right? Mm -hmm. But I can't be the starting center trying to play point guard. No, you can't. You can't. I have to learn how to play my your, your position. position. Right. And the problem is we allow the world to come in and get our minds on certain things that we don't have a mindset of teamwork. Because I'm, I'm bet this is. I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up. I'm, because I'm, when you don't play your position, well, first of all, you can want to play ball. Mm hmm. Okay. I wanted to get married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. we, 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 you can you, you can play your game. Mm -hmm. But if you don't know your position, mm -hmm. then you can't play your position. So and if, if if I'm point guard 
And then I get out on the floor and I try to be uh, forward, forward or, mm-hmm. or some, you know, another position, but I'm supposed to be where I'm supposed to be mm-hmm. and I'm not there. Guess what? Chances are we're not going to win about the game. Well, but mama, this is the other thing to that. John Sally played for the Detroit Pistons in a reserve role in the, when they won 89-90, right? Mm-hmm. He also played on, I think, yeah, he played on the Chicago Bulls doing one of their runs in a reserve role. Mm-hmm. He also played <laughs> with the Los Angeles Lakers in a reserve role with Shaq and Kobe was there, mm-hmm. right? Okay. In a reserve role, like pretty much he just showed up to practice. He was a veteran presence in the locker room. He ain't really getting no playing time, <laughs> but he got all of those championship rings mm-hmm. because he was he played his position and was part of the team. And I think a lot of times with that, with with a lot of these ideologies and you know, uh uh, you know, superwoman, superman, all of these things, girl, don't let nobody in, boy, don't know nobody. We get all of these ideologies and thoughts in our head, which hinders us from really fully experiencing the beauty of the relationship because of our mindset. Right. And we become, we begin blocking our blessings, but getting mad at other people, blaming other people when it's really you. And 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 even within, uh, and, and I learned, um, I had to learn to listen and there's, there's another word there. Mm. It's a word that we don't like to use. Mm. What is it? Shut up? No. No. <laughs> Obey. Obey. But, but okay. Obey. So mama, what, how much was it? <clears throat> and I'm going to ask this question. I've gotten to a point in my life that I don't worry about certain stuff, mm-hmm. especially when it comes to the military, when it comes to my job, when it comes to all that. I don't get into what a lot of people may get into. They try to get to know people, politics, rub elbows, and hey, hey, this track, they said, if you go this job, this job, this job, this job, and that will lead to here and here, and you want to get this, you want to get that. Listen, when I, I learned as a young private, that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Everywhere that I have been, it has been for me to be there and to include the job that I'm in right now. So because God has showed me over that time that his track record is flawless Mm -hmm. and I submitted myself to that, in that area, I have no worries. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is trying to eliminate that worry is we are consumed with stuff we don't have no control over. We are consumed with stuff that we have no business being consumed with. Going back to the story that you gave at the beginning, talking about Adam and Eve. God gave, and a lot of people say, well, why did he do that? Because God God, God is a, is a, a, a creator and he is a, he believes in choice. Mm. He believes divine will, permissive will. He, he he believes in that because let's look at slavery. The what ended up being what's called the slave trade. The people that were brought over here were not brought over here because they wanted to be. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So they were forced to do things that they really didn't want to do. Mm-hmm. There is another type of quote slavery that involves some, some people from Africa, mm-hmm. but it was called indentured servants. Mm-hmm. The indentured servants wanted to come, mm-hmm. but there was a plan. Mm-hmm. And the plan was you work so many years, you pay off your debt, that, and then, you know, you, that's you're free. pretty much how the 13 colonies started. Okay, right. Correct. Mm-hmm. But that is really, if you, I mean, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm reaching way out, but that God wants us to want to be mm-hmm. a part of his family. Yeah. He doesn't want to force you. Could he force you? Yeah, yeah he could. But it's, and, it's, it's about, and, and I understand what you're saying though. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different thing. And if you just look at it about, just 
uh, just even I just use relationship. I said the two the two pow most powerful things that you'll see in any successful relationship is you will have a person that is willing mm -hmm. and a person that is consistent. Consistent, correct. Not perfect, no. but willing and, and consistent. consistent. The willingness, it, the willingness expressed or displays the desire to be there. Correct. And it's like I don't want to create you and force you to. I want you to want to. I want you Even to though want. it it will hurt me, just like a kid. If I the parent of a kid, I want you to respect me. I want you to love me. But if you choose to go otherwise for whatever reason, guess what? Do you? You know what I'm saying? And and it will be hard. We we yeah, find that out in in the in the story of the part of the son. But when 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 God gave them the permission to choose, but He did tell He did tell them you can have everything. Now you you think about this. Mm -hmm. You go into I'm gonna say Walmart. Mm -hmm. Everybody almost everybody knows about Walmart or Target. You go in there. And you are told that you can have anything in the store that you want, except for what's in those boxes right there. You don't know what's in them boxes. Mm -hmm. But what do you want more than anything? What's else? in them boxes? That's, that's what I'm saying. That's the human nature part. That, and that's why I talk about the human nature that, part. That, that, but, that is it. But he gives us the opportunity now. And that's what he does for us now. You can have anything you want. The only thing I ask of you is to uh, stay away from that that is not of me. But mama, what I what I what I really wanted to hit on too is you was you were functioning. Oh, I was functioning in the role of a wife. Correct. You was, was actively functioning. functioning in the role of a wife. No, I was actively functioning in the role of a minister, pastor's wow. wife. Got it, got it. So, so but yeah. but you were rebellious towards being the wife of Truly means of being the wife to Robert Shepherd. Correct. And, and, I, I, and, I, I, and, and I, I want I, I want to bring that up because you were committed because of the expectations of how you were brought up to okay, minister wife and all this, that, and the third, right? Yes. But now uh the role of the person. That was the issue because of what was going on with you, because you felt it didn't. It wasn't. And I'm not saying this to beat you down, but you felt it wasn't that dad to say, well, this is how I feel. This is what I'm going to do. But you felt that. I felt that. I did. What do we have? What Coach James said? Uh, Coach, Co <laughs> oh, go, Co oh, he's going to. He's going to. Of course. Mama, he's here we go. Uh, he said, Coach James, we going. First of all, I got to go back. We got my man, Corey Thomas. What's going on? Hey, man, all is well. Uh, we had some good comments coming. Coach Jenkins said, "If we bring it up after we after we're clean, <laughs> then some folks <laughs> tend to think we're dirty again." But yeah, that, <laughs> yeah about that's the folks going back to the folks in the church. Yeah, that, that's the hater again. The hater is back on. <laughs> She's talking about herself. I remember. I think we had said something. She was talking about grandma. Please about going to the church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, Coach said this. I left out. Uh, I left out of position. We got point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center, and bench <laughs> bench warm. Okay, uh, the bench, bench rider, <laughs> but the bench rider get a, get a ring. That's all I'm saying. And then Mika said this. Mika said, uh, "I agree with that. When it's time, when it was my time, I received a leadership role, which is a position that is continuing to order my steps." And she was talking about what I what I talked about earlier. But Mom, the reason why I want to bring that up is because a lot of times, you know, we would we can be in the position in the position, but we don't have the right mindset to fully to fully uh, embody that role and operate in the fullness that comes from it. So, for example, right, there's nothing more satisfying than being a father. Mm -hmm. There's nothing more satisfying. Yes, what is it? Well, <laughs> it's new to me. I'm speaking on what I know right now. But uh, but there's nothing more satisfying for me as a son to be able to uh, take care of my mom. You see what I'm saying? I know we had these conversations, but there's nothing more satisfying with that, right? But I had to make some decisions to be able to be in a position to do what I'm doing. Correct. You see what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. right? So with that, by embodying that role, it is gives it gives me more than what money could bring me to be able to do it 
because I'm embodying that role. I'm fulfilling the fullness of that role, right? And then the Bible says the blessing has no sorrow. So when God bless you with, with daddy, and I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about the, 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 the humanity of him. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about no. the creation of who he was as his spirit man was what was needed but in, instead of two becoming one, uh, instead was, of two becoming one, we we were two that were in the same in place. The same place, and that makes a difference. But uh, two, I also had to learn at that time the true meaning, and that we're not gonna get we're not gonna get told on that. But I, I will want to, I do want to say this: the true meaning, and we because we have a lot of people who talk about. Uh, woman mm -hmm. and and I will say that a I have to go back and I'm gonna have to say this there is a superwoman mm. that God talks about mm. or that's talked about in the Bible. Well you, you see yeah, okay that, that, so so you, 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 you want me to tell you who she is yeah, yeah I already know what you're talking you about you already know what I'm talking about yeah, you're okay. talking about Proverbs 32 I'm talking about I'm talking about Proverbs 31 uh -huh. and she is a superwoman but guess what her superwomanhood does what it does it builds the household it builds and it, it builds the household and we have to look at the soup that you talk about but she she gets up early in the morning but wait a minute hold on hold on I, I, hold on I, wait I, a minute hold on wait a minute now wait a minute because i know what you're talking about with this proverb 31 but i got a job and I got I got my stuff that I'm working on. The woman gets up early in the morning. She makes sure that her family eats. But wait a minute, hold on. I, 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 I work too, so I just want to. I, what about me? She eating? she makes sure that her family eats. She makes sure that her servants eat. But and, and you know, so she takes care of that. Now she got servants, so you know. Listen, what, 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 what she got servants. Let's just do that. Uh -huh. But she also goes to work. But wait a minute. But she, wait a she minute. She goes to work. But what? Why her husband can't do that stuff for her? She goes to work. And when and she she goes to work outside of the house. Mm. But she also comes home and she works inside of the house. So, but you and what I'm talking about, and this is what with Proverbs 31. I I, I really um, urge people to read that because a lot of people talk about it, but I don't think they fully understand it. Mm -hmm. And in the context of the. Uh, Partnership aspect, of correct, it. and it was, but everything she does is for building, building the household, the household, and then this is what a lot of people get out. This is where a lot of people misinterpret things, mm -hmm. and this is how we've had a lot of uh, um, uh, which dogmatic teaching, a lot mm -hmm. of uh, um, just male chauvinism, and a lot of ignorance that come and they try to teach this thing. But when you look at it in the context of Proverbs thirty-one, when it said that. Her she brings honor to her husband, husband. that's in with the elders or the the the, the, the men in the men, men men at, at the gate. But when we talk about bringing honor, right, to her husband, a lot of people talk about man, she just got to serve her husband. No, it's no. talking about the house. Correct. He she brings honor to him, which means that God sees that his honor is the honor is on him. She's not overstepping her boundaries like a lot of things that I did. And we're not going to get into all of that. But when, <laughs> but <laughs> God sees it and God blesses the family. God blesses the household. But, and by when she does that, because not only does her husband her bring kids. on her kids recognizes yes. that she was a, you know, hey, but mama, she, mom, mama held things together but when mama you, did that thing but, but but she did it in order to build but the household she wasn't superwoman and yes, when we, no she wasn't and okay. we, this is why i say okay, why you say she this was is superwoman? this is this is why i want to bring this into the correct context okay you don't say she's superwoman. no i don't okay. because when we say superwoman the automatic thing that goes to our mind is there was some put like this she wasn't super in her in herself. In herself. Correct. What her super came from the empowerment from God through her obedience and her discipline. 
Oh yeah. He, because when we talk about the discipline aspect of it, she got up early, she did all this, right? Mm -hmm. That never said that she got tired. No. And not saying that, hey, because guess what? A lot of times, a lot of women are doing a whole bunch of stuff. But they're not, they're not doing it. They're not, they're doing, not, they're not doing it in the context correct. of what, in, in the context of building together, they're doing it in the context of look at me, look, look at, at me, I'm look doing. at what I'm doing. Correct. So when it comes to it, you're always tired. You're always wore out. You're always this, that, and the third. But this is not a bashing. This is not a bashing. I'm just saying in the context, and this is a talking about the context uh of marriage mm -hmm. the context of marriage Correct. um and i wanted to just talk about that that conversation tonight because you had to come and deal with the realization that you <laughs> and there's plenty of times where i've been the one blocking my own blessing yes. i've been the one blocking my own blessing because i didn't want to discipline myself in the things that i needed to do See, I, I was blocking my own. Listen, okay. listen, listen, listen. God has uh, a lot of times we talk about, and I talk about this on uh, 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 Finally Free, my song on my album, Another Plug, Go Get It, right? <laughs> but Finally Free, I said, I'm free from being broke because my mindset had to change. And the reason why I talked about that was because I had to change my mindset, how I thought about certain things. Because guess what? We can be living in uh poverty we can we god can bless us with the means to be out of poverty but we still have a poverty mindset we still have a poverty mindset so Kurt, Kurt thompson said that um, a lot of women that i know have told me that it's hard to be a letter to a wife to its letter and and to be a proverbs 31 woman it is hard but it's but this, it is, no it, it is not hard it is hard when you're within yourself. It's not hard it's, when you're so, following what it is that you're supposed to do. Because if you think about everything that you're supposed to do, uh, not saying that you do everything that the, the everything, because not all of us have service, okay? <laughs> but but the, the main thing is that he that she ensures that her 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 household is taken care of. And she ensures that what she does brings honor to her husband, not to make him. But now, again, the husband has to be one that's up under Christ. Yes. He has to be, so, it has to be in the order. And if he is not, of, he's not one that's, that understands the order, it's probably not gonna work. But mama, I wanna hit that, I wanna, I wanna speak to that too, because that's a real cop out for a lot of people. Because a lot of times what they look for people is in order to submit, they want somebody that uh, is really doing what they want them to do. Mm -mm, no. But when you're saying that submitting to Christ, right? Right. right. You're, right. Submitting to, you're, you're submitting to, you're submitting to your, I, I submitted to my marriage because I, I, through my meditation and studying, I realized that I made a vow and I, the vow that I made was unto God and God never makes a vow that he does not bring to fruition. So mama, this is, I just thought about something. But we stop. Mom, I, I just thought about something. Okay. Talk superwoman thing, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. The superwoman thing that, you know, Portia, that I, that <laughs> Portia keep wanting to try to talk about. But, you know, T.D. Jake said this. T.D. Jake said that, you know, it's cool to be superwoman when you're 25. It ain't cool when you're 40. I'm 60. Or, or 60. <laughs> but it just brought this back to me. I can remember during those 20 plus years that you talked about, mm -hmm. I can remember you going to the hospital because of exhaustion more than once. Yeah. In the in the, in the, the 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 years that you submitted, you were a caregiver to both my grandfather and my dad. Correct. Still working, still raising kids, and you never went. Not for exhaustion. Not for exhaustion. Mm -hmm. You went for, for some other stuff, <laughs> but but not for exhaustion. Right. But I'm talking about the, just from that standpoint of you see, you had to do more. I had to do more. But God gave you. He had given me, and you know, and that's what I had to. I had to come to a realization. I'm killing myself for no reason. 
mm. when I, I didn't have to. And I, and mama, so, and that's what I, the reason why I, I'm, I'm talking about, the reason why I want to hit on that mama is there are so many people now who are wearing themselves out mm -hmm. because they are blocking their own blessings and not allowing the what God had blessed them with to really run his course. Like if you at your job and God blessed you with a job and you didn't have no job, why are you in there worried about how to bounce doing this, that, and the third? Correct. Why are you not in there? And then I'm being honest with you. Why are you not in there and saying, okay, God, I know this situation ain't, it ain't fun right now, but what are you teaching me in this? Correct. And I and I've been in those situations. Yeah, but and I, and, and I and I had to, you know, I had to pray. And then, you know, part of my realization in my marriage is, you know, like, okay, God, I'm here. And I recognize that I was there, not because of me. Because again, like I said, I, I was this hmm. <laughs> what 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 they say that we're we're no more than a filthy rag. Mm -hmm. I I felt I felt that I was the filthiest of the filthy rags. Mm -hmm. So I know that I'm not where I am because of me. So and so that I, I, I said, okay, God, so what am I supposed to do? And he said, What did you tell me you were gonna do? So mama, what so I had I had to go back. That's why I had to go back to my vow, because I, I vowed to do that. So I'm gonna ask you this question. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to someone who may be married right now, a young, younger woman who may be married right now, who is struggling with accepting the fact that who they with, they may feel like they they never vocalize it, but they may feel like they're not good enough for them because of some things that may have transpired in their past. And, you know, you understand what I'm saying? They, they, they don't I, feel I, I, good what, enough. What, what I'm going to tell you is and what, what I'm first going to say, you're going to probably cringe and they will too. They're not. They're not good enough. Mm -hmm. We're not good enough for anything that God has for us. Um, but his word is true and that he has a plan for you. What we have to ensure is that we are, as you said earlier, that we are disciplined in what it is that God told us to do. And, you know, sometimes we say, well, I'm doing what God told me to do. Are you? God told you to get up and walk every day. Do you walk? I don't feel like it. He told you to drink. He told told you to drink. Uh, like the doctor told you to drink eight glasses of water a day, and you drink two glasses of water, and the rest of you drink is tea and coke. Are you being obedient? God told water me. Water nasty. <laughs> 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 Those are the things that we do. That because, the, because you know that's, yeah. that's the things that we do. Uh, God told you to read his word every day. Do you read his word? I'll be tired. God told you to take time out for yourself and meditate. Meditate meaning that you don't you, you you shut off everything else and the only thing you're thinking about is what it is that God has to say to you. How much time do you take out for that? And you say you're doing what God told you to do. Are you? We're not. We don't. As, as we don't do that. We don't do the things that we're supposed to do. Um, we we fill ourselves with so many things that are that that are not necessary for us to live. And he he's not he's not he doesn't tell us to do anything. And I, I, the things <laughs> that I'm telling he doesn't tell you anything to do that's going to stop you from doing it. And Miss Miss Jardine, yes, ma'am. That's why we still in the waiting room. So and and what, what those of you who don't understand. God will put you in a waiting room. If you don't believe that he will put you in a waiting room, ask Joseph. That's all I got to say. But anyway, he, he, when I learned that and what young ladies need to learn that, that and young men too, you're not worthy of what God has for you. So what you do is you wait and you listen and you, you, you obey his word. So, and then when you do that and submit yourself, so surrender yourself to him. That there's a, a hymn. I know y'all don't know anything about him, but the hymn says, I surrender all, mm -hmm. all to him I give. And you say, well, how do I do that? Don't worry about it. Well, I, God, okay, this is what I'm going through this. I don't understand why I'm going through it. And like you said earlier, uh, God, I'm going through this right now. I know I'm supposed to learn something. I don't know what it is. I don't want to go through this, but help me understand what it is that I'm supposed to learn so that I can do. Because what you have to learn is not necessarily just for you. 
So and I, and mom and change your thinking. Oh, so yeah. and this this is why I say change your thinking. Um, a lot of times with that is um, it's how you view something, the value you put on something. For example, if somebody right now gave you a million dollars, you would look at that and you would value that million dollars. Mm -hmm. You yeah. wouldn't just say, nah, I'm not deserving of it. Mm -mm. You're going to say, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> you say, thank you. Right? So when God blesses us with something, and I'm talking, and this is the stuff I'm talking about. And I'm not just a lot of us, we 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 meditated, we thought about it, we prayed to God for our husband or for our wives, right? Mm -hmm. And God, I want a man that do this, 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 this. And you got one through a hundred, and God gives you somebody that's one through ninety-five. And you worried about you worry about the five and not appreciating the 95 that he gave you, but then the other five that that they quote unquote didn't have is was the five that they do have that they don't that they don't have that's on your checklist is what you need. Because God knew what was best for you because he's the creator. Correct. And we are say vow, but then we get in a relationship and try to do our own things and worry about why we're not being blessed. But the vow, again, we have to understand that the vows that are made, especially if you have a, a ceremony that involves uh, a minister providing the, the, the vows for you to share with each other, mm -hmm. that if what is done, and normally they say that is done in the presence of this assembly, God and this assembly, God never, ever breaks a vow. He never breaks a vow. So whatever is broken, you might want to take a look at the man in the mirror. But it's hard, mama. Or the woman in the mirror. It's hard to really accept that when we are so used to being disappointed by others. It's hard for us to, to, listen, to do that when we are continuing to listen to the voices and the, the noises that's not of God, and they are there. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you said in one of your songs, I, 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 I need you to understand what um, what one of the things that you said um, earlier uh, in one of your no, in one of your songs. Sometimes <laughs> the enemy, the enemy the is e my enemy. <laughs> the e n e m y yeah. is my i n n e r. M E. Yes, ma'am. Because we have within ourselves so so many times we have within ourselves in our mind, such as a man thinketh, so is he. We have within our mind, which God tells us that we have to renew our minds daily about what he wants us to do. Because we we because we've listened to this noise so often, we begin to think within the inner me mm -hmm. that the inner me knows what's do we, we we begin to think that the inner me that we're listening to is God but it's not so he said uh he, he said this so lean not trust in the Lord with all, all of your heart, heart and lean and not to your, your own understanding. understanding correct and all your ways acknowledge him correct. and he shall make your path straight Correct. So, and I just want to share that because what I wanted to speak to people about, and Mama, thank you so much. I really appreciate oh, you're you welcome. sharing. I'm sorry that I, I went off no, into no, no, left field. It wasn't going um, off in the left field. I just wanted to say this, though, Mama. It is necessary that we come to the realization that uh, we come to the realization that a lot of times you have been the one. We have oh, been the one. The person in the mirror has been the one to block our blessing. And we keep blaming other people, but this how you know you've been the one blocking your blessing. You want to know the, the thing, Mom? What? You know you've been the one blocking your blessings when the same situation keep coming up in different places. Oh, you know, you know what that's called. And, and my my sister, Miss Jardine, she and I, we got a we got a message for that. We got a, we got a title for that. What is that? We are so dumb that God has to keep reteaching the lesson that he tried to get us to learn on the first time. No child left behind. <laughs> no, no child left behind. So, <laughs> it, so, it, with so God. He, you going to get that or it can you, be over. You're going to have to get that lesson. You, if you keep redoing, if 
you keep doing the same thing over and over again, and he keeps bringing it up over and over again, you know, okay. And, and understand, none of us are perfect. And, and none, none, none is perfect. Well, but, I'm I'm close to perfect. You know that. You know how people be thinking, no, we're not we're perfect. <laughs> none of us are perfect. So whatever, whatever you may feel is done to you, and again, I say whatever mm -hmm. you may feel is done to you. Mm -hmm. Don't try to get anybody back. Mm. Because only thing you're doing then, because now get big. Because everything you do, there are consequences. So, and this is something that I I try to teach my kids when they were younger. There are consequences to every decision that you make. Some of the consequences are good, and then some of the consequences are bad, not but, so good. But but listen, but 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 you, you made those choices. You made those choices, and I and I keep wanting to get at that, Mama is. The, the choices that I made, I you know I. But but listen, Mama, I, I, we don't we don't want to. We have to embrace, and I know we 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 going we going over over. Oh, oh. But we have to embrace the humanity, the reality of our humanity. No 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 sugarcoating it. No trying to uh, hallelujah it in a way. <laughs> none of that. We have to embrace the humanity, uh, the reality of our humanity. But we also have to embrace embrace the reality of our spirituality as well. Correct. And that's where the conflict come in that. But we have to realize that guess what? If I if, if and I and I challenge people to do this. If you find yourself in a situation where you want to uh uh the Bible says oh taste it was oh taste and see oh, that the word so if I oh Lord taste and see eat. just taste it I promise you just say God okay if you say this he not going to disappoint you but we have this and this is a whole nother subject, Mama. But as a church, we have wounded so many people with with flawed theatrics <laughs> instead of getting people the true substance of what the reality is of making those day to day decisions to honor Christ. What was that? Coach Jenkins just said, said earlier. Coach Jenkins said, uh, "I'm gonna try to find it." But I just want to get into it. Um, just really thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Uh, really want to thank my mama, my beautiful mother, for just being sharing with us tonight. Um, I really appreciate um, her transparency. And I just hope that this was really help somebody that may be going through some stuff, maybe find yourself struggling with some things. Trust God, <laughs> man. Don't, don't, don't worry about the people. Just trust God. Um, and, and, and I'm telling you, free yourself from other people. Free yourself from folks. <laughs> He uh, said, "If you bring it up after we're clean, then some folks tend to think that they are dirty." Yeah, again. but the reality is, we all dirty. <laughs> like nobody ever's gonna get to a point to where we good enough, even yeah. in heaven. Like this is a reality that God has shown me, and I was like, "Dang!" <laughs> even in heaven, for all of eternity, we still would not be able to fully understand the glory of God. So that blows our minds, and in that thinking of that. So we're not perfect. God used imperfect people to, to speak to the hearts of other imperfect people. So understand the things that we struggle with, share them things with somebody else so they can be a blessing so that they don't have to go through the same struggles that you went through. So I thank everybody for tuning in tonight. For real, I really appreciate it. Uh, looking forward to, uh, looking forward to uh, continuing this conversation. Thank you, Mama D. Uh, not Lil Deborah, but thank you, Mama D, uh, for coming on. Uh, and thank I, you for having me. Thank, thank you. For so, me. Portia said that you didn't let me talk enough. So, Por, Por, yes. Portia can go kick rocks. <laughs> that's what Portia can do. She can go kick rocks. Uh, but I, I love you. Love you all. Thank you guys so much. Uh, share this with somebody. Let people know, man, it's okay. It's okay. Because guess what? My mama, she said 20 plus years, then you made a decision and God just moved, moved mildly. If you if you're committing to being an eight, and then that was just one aspect. That one aspect. That was just one aspect. Yeah. There were a lot of things, other things that was not necessarily, but I know that people we too often look at material things, but it's the constant it, fight. It, it's it, just it, a, it, it, it was, I want to be like it's it's <laughs> <laughs> when When we look at this, 
the enemy always will go after the order Correct. in which God established. Which is always. Which is what's wrong with a lot of black families now. Always. And that's a whole nother, I think we're going to speak on that. Hey, I want to let everybody know I Iantha uh, Houston will be on October the 9th. Uh, so looking forward to that. Um, and as uh, soon as we get the title for next week, we're going to have it on. Thank you guys again. Uh, really appreciate the support. All of his uh, regular listeners and, and um, viewers, don't hold it against him this time, okay? We love you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys take it easy. God bless.